Hey guys, hope you're doing well today. Um, I'm working this 2020 Kyle Busch, thank you heroes number 18 for Stefan. And um, I've got just these last few pieces to put on, these the headlights here and, uh, and this uh, uh, nose. And one of the things I'm going to do, if you can see, see the blue that's in here? And I've told you how I like to trim the, uh, uh, the Camry um, pieces here, just cut in here so that it can lay in there nicely. But inevitably, when I put this on, I'm going to end up with a little white exposed behind here. So what I'm going to do is I've got my paint and I'm just going to kind of just I'm thinking maybe right around here is where it'll be exposed when I spread that open there. So I'm going to take a little bit of my blue paint. I'm just going to kind of paint in here to try to complete this M&M here ever so slightly. Of course let it dry. I've got three coats of clear sealer on this so I shouldn't have any problem with the paint being up against the decal. But the headlight is going to go across here, so I'm not too concerned about the headlight area. What I'm concerned about is in here with a little bit of white exposed. Yeah, it's probably a little, you know, much. Um, I've made this car before without any hesitation, but I just wanted to cover this area here for Stefan and, uh, and finish that up, so... Everything else in the car is coming together as planned. I had a little scratch. I'm not even sure where it came from. It's like a little scratch on the windshield here. If you can see that. It's a little white right there and it kind of the scratch kind of comes down here. I thought it was on the inside. And so I was trying to, you know, take my uh little brush here, get a little sealer on it and kind of come in here and do this. <laughs> I touched the uh I touched the dash. You can see where see where it's like glossy right there in the center. <laughs> so I gotta I gotta get some uh, uh, doll coat and just kind of rub it over that to make sure that that covers up. But even still, I, it's probably gonna be discolored. But you know whatever. But anyways, I, I think it's it, it must be on the outside here, and um, and I'm just gonna continue to put more coats of clear sealer on there. Hopefully cover this up. But um, anyways. You know, those little dumb things happen when you're making customs where you get just a little imperfection. And, um, you know, as I'm striving for perfection, it bugs the heck out of me. And then, of course, <laughs> it being right there on the stinking windshield. Ugh. You know. That's like the worst place to have a scratch on any of the little glasses. Right there. <laughs> uh Okay, enough whining. All right, so what I've got here is, this is the um, Oasis Blue, and this matches uh, pretty well with that uh, blue M&M. So we're gonna give this a try here. And shaking it up. All right. Um, I need to get a little applicator. Use this little guy. Yes, wash my hands. Dawn soap. I don't need very much, but I, I do want to mix it just a little bit. 
get uniform color here. Is it a 100% perfect match? No, but it's pretty close. time being. So I'm going to bring it all the way over here like that. That's a pretty close match, isn't it? You can see that. It's a really close match. I think I'll have coverage here with the decal, but just in case. Okay. Oop. Missed a little spot right in there. pretty good. I've covered what I want to cover. Again, um, you never want to get paint right against the decal. So after you decal, you let it dry. I usually let it dry for 24 hours. And then I put three coats. I, I used to do less and I run into trouble. So I do three coats of clear sealer and I use the pledge. And once that dries, actually I let it dry for typically a day, <laughs> maybe that's a little much, but at least 12 hours I would say, and then you get your paint, and then you can paint, because that sealer will have that, put that, create that barrier between the decal, that paper decal, and the paint, and so the paint won't get into it and, you know, infect it, so to say. And the infection will look like just a bubbling It'll um, obviously it'll discolor it, and um, it's not pretty. So, but this paint will dry pretty quickly, and then what I'll do is I'll put a coat of clear sealer on it, maybe two coats, and then I think I'm okay for the decal to go over the paint. Uh, dried paint, you know, doesn't need a whole lot of protection when you put the decals on it but since this is a satin finish I want to I want to bring the finish up to more of a glossy finish to match what's around it and then I'll put the decal on it and then I'll put more sealer on these decals she'll be done and she'll be done so that's that can't do a super long video this morning because our hot water heater stopped working again and uh, I gotta run to the this little place that sells parts and uh, and try to get a flame sensor if I can't get a flame sensor I might need to get a whole stinking burning assembly not too excited about that but um, yeah it worked for me when I took a shower yesterday morning, uh, but apparently throughout the day it, 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 worked, it worked its way out of not working. So um, I think it's just a flame sensor, but anyways, uh, that's what I've got to do. The other thing I'm working here, <clears throat> of course you can see I've got a Clover uh, Matt Kenseth car to do, and so uh, I'll be working that. That's uh, for my own. 
Um, whoops, turn the camera up here just a little bit. So I went ahead and and um, I've got these painted now. Uh, this is going to be another Bubba Wallace uh, number 43 vote. And um, Billy, I've got your uh, cars over here that I'm starting to kind of sand down. Uh, these little um, uh, slot cars. Um, I have to tell you, taking the uh, taking the dark um, plastic window out of this, um, one of them was fairly easy. The other one was a pain in the butt because they're just like pressed in there. And so uh, the the tab the tab on this side broke, but anyways, um, yeah, kind of just sanding those down a little bit before I painted it. I did prime this one. I need another uh, coat of the primer on that. So yeah, so I got this uh, painted yesterday morning. This will be a vote car, and then I've got these starburst cars here. That I've just put a coat of um, flat white primer on. Um, so Mr. MB actually sent this decal set to me. So what I'm going to do on this uh, Starburst Duos is I'm going to, you know, obviously try to match that yellow. And I think my best yellow is um, to match that is is this high performance uh, yellow. I think that's my best match. And uh, so I'm going to do that. It's not the fluorescent. Uh, it's not that Ryan Blaney fluorescent thing. And actually, I think this is probably the same type of yellow that I'm going to use here for um, uh, for the Brandon Jones number 19 as well. So um, I did want to I did want to do something. So yeah, I did want to do something exactly. <laughs> but I just painted this yesterday morning with a coat of um, flat uh, white primer and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint one of these cars here and then I just put a coat of clear sealer on this one so I painted it white flat right white primer and then I put a coat of the pledge on it and I'm probably gonna put another coat of the pledge on it and then I'll paint this tomorrow morning and the reason I do that is sometimes this high performance yellow, I just get it a little too thick and it actually bubbles on me and cracks uh, the primer. So, and I'm positive I have to prime with this. This isn't the, you know, um, paint and primer in one. Uh, this stuff, um, my experience, especially with the yellow, is you have to prime it so let's give it a try as you heard I was shaking it up as I started the video so we'll give that a try and paint one of these things bring it around here show you what I'm looking at 
maybe that's not the best kind of angle. But I'm going to let it sit just for a second here, a couple seconds. And I'll go over it again real lightly. Looking pretty good. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So, if you can tell, obviously it's still wet. But I think I think that's going to be a pretty good match. And I'm going to do all, you know, all five of these cars like that. Um Yeah, so what else is going on? Um what the heck? I'll, I'll share with you guys a couple things I've been thinking about and um, a couple things that God's really been, I want to say, convicting me about. Um, so, uh, so here, let me, uh, let me transition on you, all right? Let me, uh, let me transition on you. And um, wasn't really planning this, but, um, but I'll, I'll kind of let the Spirit lead, so to say. And... Um, um, so God's been convicting me about a couple things. Um, he's been convicting me about my finances. And he's been convicting me, um, about what I've been eating. Does that make sense? You guys ever get, um, so I'm, I'm going to transition away from the die cast hobby, um, and share some, share some personal stuff. But, but anyways, um, I've been kind of tracking this last maybe six months um, um, well let me back up even further so when I was in college um, I, I went for electrical engineering got an electrical engineering degree and I had a, an, a, a one class one credit hour elective to take and so I decided to take my senior year this class called conditioning for life and um, I thought, it, you know, it's funny, the things you remember, right? But I thought that was a really good class, you know, about exercising, eating right, uh, trying to get yourself into a routine. Um, you, you don't want it to be, you know, a, a mindless routine, but get into a routine. You know, you want to exercise. The class was teaching, you know, about exercising maybe like three days a week for, you know, getting your heart rate up to you know, uh, extended levels for at least 20 minutes, that type of thing, and various, you know, foods to eat and things to stay away from. I remember specifically uh, the teacher talking about things, you know, some of the worst things on the planet that you could eat. Um, and, it, you know, I remember having a discussion, you know, and it was in that top three was, you know, uh, French fries with the salt and ketchup <laughs> and, uh, you know, things we love, right? And then uh, the other thing that was brought up, one of the worst things you could eat, was like that um, uh, Mounds candy bar, you know, with the with the coconut goo in the middle, 
just packed full of sugar and chocolate. And, um, and I remember thinking, dang, that's my favorite candy bar. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, of late, um, you know, and over the years I've tried to eat well, um, but I haven't always done that. And God's been ki actually kind of convicting me about it of late. And so this is what I'm going to try to do for the next three days. I have, I've got a list of things that I'm going to eat for the next three days. <laughs> Every day, this is what I'm going to have, right? So I'm going to have a lemon, an avocado, two eggs, some kale, uh, a quarter cup of walnuts, a quarter cup of blueberries, uh, some water, and um, my wife bought some uh, this stuff called coffee. It's basically coffee that's made from figs. It's really weird. But anyways, I can have some coffee, um, and I'll have a packet of Truvia that goes into it. It's like stevia. And then I'm going to have uh, a little bit of milk, and then uh, add it to that. And that's it. That's all I'm going to eat in one day. And then I've got some other things. I've got some supplements. So I've got some uh, boron and uh, some cinnamon, potassium, and magnesium. I'm going to have just you know a little scoop of that stuff, put it in water, and mix it up and drink it. So I'm going to do this for three days. Um, it's probably not a good time with... Uh, J July 4th so maybe it'll just be two days <laughs> today and tomorrow I don't know because uh, probably gonna cook out on July 4th but anyways God's been convicting me about it I need to get a better grasp of of uh, of what I throw into my my uh, my mouth um, really trying to focus on you know getting rid of some uh, of the breads the sugars of course you know breakfast cereals that's just you know, not good for you, and uh, and just try to get back to some real food. Avocado and eggs are like some of the best foods you can eat. Um, and so, anyways, uh, that's that's the one thing, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, the other thing that God's been working me on, and uh, yeah, I wasn't. It's funny, I wasn't really planning on this being a long video, but um, I'll just share with you what God's been working with me on. Um, in the book of 1st Timothy chapter 6 and I've read this before uh, a few times um, and I'm starting to better you know, understand it let me turn this down just a little bit so 1st Timothy chapter 6 you know, and, and again guys I, I love the word of God it is a light for us on this path, this journey that we have. I highly encourage you to to read it, to study it, to meditate upon it. It is so wonderful. This world is going to suck you in and get you doing things that you shouldn't be doing and things that are very harmful for you. Um, and so I, I'm trying to read a chapter a day now um, and try to you know really meditate on it, um, but anyways, God brought me to First Timothy six in my thinking, and it's interesting. Um, just in context, he, he's talking about servants um, giving honor to their masters, and then you know masters, um, you know, treating their servants kindly. And it's really that you know back in the day it was they did have slaves and. And stuff, but this is more today of like a employee-employer relationship, how we treat one another. Um, but he goes on, and and I'm just 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 passing quickly here, verses three and four of First Timothy six, and he says he gets into this phrase talking about um, uh, gain, um, and I think he's talking about financial gain here. And it was how some masters were treating their servants primarily just for financial gain. And if financial gain was happening for us, that that somehow translated into, oh, I must be living godly because God is blessing me financially. I must be living godly. And that's not the case because he says, um, supposing that gain is godliness. And then he says, withdraw yourself from these types of people. Interesting. But here's where it gets very um, painful for me. But godliness with contentment 
is great gain. So as I've got noted here, right, godliness. Godliness is pretty, pretty simple what it is. It's a God-centered life, and you become more godly by making godly decisions. <laughs> it sounds simple, right? Um, you make a godly choice now, and then you follow that up with another godly choice, and you just line them up, and you make godly choice after godly choice, and then you realize, oh, I'm living godly. I'm doing the things that God wants me to do. So what he does is he says, godliness plus contentment equals great gain. And I'm, I, I don't think he's talking about financial gain here. He could be. It could refer to that. But what is great gain for us? It's happiness. It's peace. It's joy. Regardless of our circumstances, godliness plus contentment is great gain. And this is where God's been working on me. He's been working on me on this contentment piece. Let's just go quickly through here. So it says, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. So basically he says, if you have food and you have clothing, uh, covering, you know, you could, you know, translate that into clothing, but, you know, just you're, you're protected. Uh, you're not running around destitute and naked, right? If you have those things, be content with that. And then it says, and these are some hard words for me, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Note what he says here, they that will be rich. It's not talking about they that are rich. He actually gets that to verse 17. But he says they that will be rich. You could be dirt poor and have an intense desire to be rich and then and you fall into temptation and snare. God is convicting me on this. I, I sometimes have this desire to be rich, to have more than what I have. Even though I have all I need, I have this desire to have more. But look at verse 10. And this is a popular verse. You've heard this probably before if you're a Bible reader. It says, For the love of money is the root of all evil. And it's funny, I looked up this word, you know, money. Love of money is one word. It's really love of silver, uh, philargoria. Uh, phil um, it's talking about silver, just you know, but it's translated money. Um, but the love of money is the root of all evil, while, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, pierced themselves through with many sorrows. This, this is a self-inflicted sorrow that I know I have had happen to me in the past when I have pursued financial gain. I have pierced myself with many sorrows. And I'm trying to turn from this. It's a struggle. I think for men in particular, we desire to have more and more and more. And we have to be content with what we have. So, my friends, my brothers, um, I hope you're doing well. And um, I hope this is encouraging to you. And I pray that God blesses you uh, today. Talk to you soon.